Stanislaw with Motion VFX with another tutorial on M-Puppet. And this time, we're taking a look at secondary animation and creating a character walk cycle. This is an intermediate lesson that will be taking a deep dive into keyframing in Apple Motion. Starting with our character, what we have done is divided our model into different parts using groups inside Apple Motion. We have the body broken into these groups like head, and inside the head is the eyebrows, etc. Once we've set up our character with its different groups, turn on the different meshes for each of the sections using the Show Mesh button inside M-Puppet. Since we are creating a walk cycle, let's start with the leg. You probably notice we only have one leg here, and that's on purpose. This way, we can work out the animation for the first leg and then work on the matching one using a clone. And it's easier to set and count our keyframes while in frames mode. Click the arrow next to your timecode to change the modes to frames. Next, animate the position and rotation of the leg using motion's parameters. Our main animation will last 22 frames, so move your playhead to that frame and create keyframes for the position and rotation again. About halfway through our animation, at frame 12, animate the position and rotation. Inside the keyframe window, use the tangents to smooth out the animation. At frame 6, add another keyframe to place this foot down and in position. At roughly frame 17, let's do the same. To create a little bit more realism, let's lift the foot at the 6 frame mark so it's not as rigid. Since we want this step repeated throughout the animation, click the icon next to the keyframe and make the keyframes repeat after the last keyframe. This will loop our animation. Now that motion has repeated those keyframes perfectly, they could be smoother. Use the tangents to smooth out these keyframes so the loop will become more natural. Do this for all the animations we created so far on this leg. When animating, it's always a great idea to preview sections to ensure it looks correct. Now that the leg is animated, create a new group with keyboard shortcut, command, shift, n. We'll make this group the main leg and place our leg animation inside this group. Next, make a clone of this first leg group using the K key. This will create a clone that will create our second leg. Because this is a clone of the first leg with its looping animation, just drag the clone layer on the timeline to offset the animation timing for that particular leg. Since we have our character's legs moving, Let's add secondary animation using M-Puppet. At the beginning of the timeline, I'm creating keyframes for my character's handles I've placed on the leg. I'm also creating keyframes at the 22nd frame since we want it to match the leg movement. Just like with our legs, where we've created keyframes for the in-between movements, we'll do the same with M-Puppet keyframes. With the foot down at the 15th frame, I'm adjusting the foot to give it a bit more of a natural step. Moving through the animation, try to recreate the movements of the foot as it makes contact with the ground and pushes away, like how the knee extends. Next is repeating the process for each of the other parts of the body. Since our legs are complete, let's move on to the torso. And let's move our anchor point to where a natural spine and hip connection would be. Just as we started before, Use motion's position and rotation parameters to animate the primary animation on the first and 22nd frames. Because of typical walk cycles, characters will rise and fall a bit as their weight shifts from side to side. We're using position and rotation keyframes again to create this movement. Because our character is in these groups, notice that our head and arms follow along with our torso. Let's take these same keyframes and copy them using the keyboard shortcut Command C, and I'll paste them earlier at frame 5. Using the keyframe tangent handles, smooth out the animation to your liking. If necessary, right click on them to align the handles 
or break the tangents for more precise controls. Now that we have primary animation complete, let's use mPuppet to create the secondary, more fluid animation. Clicking the mPuppet effect in the torso group, you can see the handles placed at the shoulders and outer edge of our character's hips. Setting keyframes at the start, end, and midpoint of our animation gives us a great base to work from. At frame 15, create a little secondary movement for the character and then copy and paste those keyframes at frame 5. This gives a natural wobble to the clothing. The arms are going to be a little bit different since they're not exactly repeated like our leg. Opening the arm group at frame 1, again create the keyframes for the position and rotation. It's also a good idea to make sure your anchor point is on the shoulder for natural movement. At frame 11, change the rotation to swing the arm outward with the opposite foot forward. Set our keyframes to repeat and use those tangents to smooth out those keyframes to create a steady, smooth animation. Open M Puppet applied to the arm and set a keyframe for the first and 22nd frame on the handles for the shoulder, elbow, wrist, and hand. On the 12th frame, let's move the hand and arm. Select the last keyframes for the arm and paste them on the 18th frame. This will create a more smooth end to that last position. On the last frame, let's turn that hand out just a bit. And because I want this to match the first frame, I'll copy those last keyframes onto frame one so it creates a steady, repeated pattern when we set these to repeat keyframe. One last thing before I finish with this arm is select those keyframes and change their mode to continuous. For the other arm, we're going to link the rotation movement of the first arm by using a link parameter behavior. Drag the arm forward group into the source object well. Changing the scale to negative one will give it an opposite movement. And I'll just change the Z offset just a bit for this one. Now, let's add the secondary animation using M Puppet again. With the handles at the hand, elbow, and shoulder, set the keyframes on the first and last frames. At frame 8, we'll add a secondary movement to the elbow, and let's adjust the first position and copy and paste that frame to the last frame to match. Let's give this flame a little movement too. Adjust the anchor point to the base, and we'll use the link behavior again to link the rotation of the arm backwards to the flame. Now let's work on the head. I'll use the anchor point tool and line up the head's anchor point with the neck. Just like with the previous body parts, placing keyframes at the first and last frame of the animation. At frame 6, I'll add the movement and rotations and copy and paste those keyframes on frame 16. At the halfway point of frame 11, let's add some more movement. I'll adjust my first and last frames and smooth out any tangents again and have the keyframes repeat. Let's add that secondary animation using M Puppet. Again, adding keyframes to the first and last frames, add some movement to the ears and other features until you get a look you like. The eyebrow on this character is in its own layer that can give a little bit more emotion. Let's animate this using the same principles. Just using M Puppet at the beginning and end, we can create some movement between those points. Using copy and pasted keyframes can make things a lot easier. Now that our character is animated, use the whole character group to move the character on the X axis. Just create your position keyframes and animate across the length of your comp. 
Let's change this to linear so it remains constant across the scene. And that is how to create a walk cycle and add some secondary animation using MPuppet and Apple Motion. For more great tutorials and plugins for Final Cut and Apple Motion, be sure to subscribe to Motion VFX. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.